some things that are going on with the current election, and we want to bring out some key points. Uh, how many of you know that the election that we're currently uh, uh, getting ready for is the most important election we've ever had in the history of our country? This is the most important election we've ever had, and it very well could be your last election that you get a chance to vote. How does that sound? Anybody happy about that? We fought for the right to vote. How about you? People died. People shed blood for the right to vote. And how about you have that right taken away from you? It could happen. It could happen. Well, I want to tell you that um, we got two ladies here tonight that they travel around Pitt County and this state, really, travel around the state talking about what's at stake for this upcoming election, are trying to educate people on what they need to be looking out for, what's at stake, and what you can do as a voter to exercise your right as a citizen and as a voter. And I'm so happy that when I asked them if they would come to this church to do a presentation, they jumped right in and said, yes, what date? And that excited me. When I tell you they get around, I was in Greensboro last Thursday at the Commonwealth Harris rally. And guess what? She was soon. So when I tell you she's traveling around the state, I'm not making that up and I'm not exaggerating. She's more places than I am, which is a little bit hard to do because I get around too. But I don't get around quite as much as she do, but I'm proud to have her here tonight, and I'm so glad for the organization that she's representing. Two of them are representing. And for those of you who don't know, this is my cousin. Pastor, I got one on you this time. <laughs> this is my cousin. I'm going to go ahead and beat you to it. This is my cousin. <laughs> I'm teasing Pastor because he says everybody's his cousin. Well, tonight it's my cousin. <laughs> anyway, Pastor, I'll, I'll share it with you if that's all right with you. But anyway, I'm going to ask Josephine Williams if she would come now. She will introduce our guest presenter tonight. Josephine. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I, I don't know how many people here may not know me because I am from Farmville. And this is Josephine Cole Williams. And uh, I, Jeff is my cousin, but so is Ed Thomas because I stayed on Lynch Street there in Fountain a whole lot with my bestie. <laughs> And Diane Taylor and I are here tonight with Red Wine and Blue uh, to present to you about Project 2025. And also, we want to talk to y'all about Rally, which we will do that at the end. But right now, I want to introduce to you my friend and my regional organizer, Diane Taylor. Good morning, everybody. Okay. I'm kind of glad I probably don't need it, but it'll make it a little bit easier. She's that for the people that are online. So just so y'all know, this is being streamed. So when you when we get the question and answer, it doesn't I don't I don't care what you ask. 
but but just know it's being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. You know how you look in the audience and you say, I know her. <laughs> um, well, my name is Diane Taylor, and I live in Greenville, and I have for the last 20 years. Um, and in that time, I've worked on a lot of elections behind the scenes. But this time, it was more important for me to come from behind the scenes, to be able to come out and help us to understand the importance of this election and why we really need to activate all of our friends and family to get to the polls. I will tell you that we are in church, um, that Red Wine and Blue is a nonpartisan organization, that I am not here to coerce you into voting for one candidate or the other, but I do like that shirt over there a whole, whole lot. <laughs> and I am a member of ELF, the Kevin ELF sorority. These are all facts. Just facts that I'm giving. Um, but but it is a nonpartisan organization. It's a national organization um, that started during a midterm election in 2018 um, from a Caucasian white lady in the suburbs of Ohio who was really um, was a Republican, but was very upset about the outcome of the election. And she decided that she was going to go old school and mobilize some of her friends and family to change that state. And they did. And they did so, um, I'm going to age myself a little bit, um, by like old school Tupperware parties. Right? Yeah, y'all know? <laughs> so, so they weren't loud about it, um, but they were organized and they were mobilized and they met in each other's homes. And then they spread to five states. We are now in five states, so we are in mostly battleground states, y'all. I'm sure have heard that term in regards to North Carolina being a battleground state. Um, so since 2022, um, we have been in North Carolina, and in that time, we have mobilized 40,000 people. 40,000. 40, By simply inviting your friends and your family to the polls. Now... I'm relatively new to Red Wine and Blue. I joined their team in April. Oh, gosh, months are just flying. Um, I joined their team in April, and at that time, we were just getting um, wind of Project 2025. But most people, when we did a poll, actually, at the end of April in the country, we did a, a nationwide poll, and one in eight had heard of Project 2025. That is until the DET awards. So when people try to tell you that black folks don't make a difference, I can tell you that's a lie. Because the BET awards is where Taraji P. Henson talked about the importance of us learning about Project 2025. And that one sentence was enough for people to start Googling and figuring this thing out. Now I want to start this presentation by letting you know that this is not new. This is not new. This is not... Um, a scare tactic to get you to the polls. This is an awareness campaign so that we can put two and two together and figure out what they've already been doing. For example, um, DEI, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, just two years ago existed as a whole department with a building for the black students at ECU that no longer exists. UNC students, there were over 2,000 students, black, stu black and brown students who lost their scholarships last year as a result of this, right? So this is not new, right? This is a plan that actually started in the 20s, right? So I want to be clear in that both sides, Republicans and Democrats, have a plan. They do. They always have. In fact, if they didn't have a plan, I would be worried about it, right? Because what, what business or organization doesn't have a plan? So it is not the idea that there is a plan. It's what's in the plan that troubles us, right? So all of us, no matter what organization, churches have a five-year plan or a 10-year plan, right? Schools have a five- or a 10-year plan. So it's not the idea that there's a plan. It's what's in the plan. So this particular plan actually started in 1921. That was the first version of this. And then the next version was in 1952, uh, the second version. The third version was in 2018. 
And these versions of these plans have gone from being 42 pages to now 944 pages. So why do we have these seminars? We have these seminars so that we can break that down real, real easy and allow people to understand what what's in these 944 pages. Now, I'm a journalist by trade, so I've read the plan. But I'm assuming most of, most people are not going to sit there and read 944 pages. But the things that are in there, and we'll talk about some of them tonight, are frightening. And one of the things that jumped out to me is page 423. So yes, I know I'm not, I'm not just standing here. On page 423, they talk about eliminating Head Start. Well, I'm a Head Start baby. So I'm like, what? They don't get rid of Head Start? Oh, my goodness. So, so they, these are not made up presumptions. Um, it is, um, all of it can be looked up. All of it is, is free. You don't have to pay for it. Um, so everything that we will talk about uh, is, is verifiable. Put it that way. Okay, Ms. Josephine. So what is Project 2025? We've already discussed what it is. Next slide, please. Lord. <laughs> I just want to make sure it says, did I say everything I was supposed to say? Project is a plan. There you go. Oh, so yes, it was revised during the 2018 um, year, which some of y'all will remember was his first term. So he says, or he's trying to distance himself this past year by saying he was not a part of the plan. Now, while it's true that he probably has not read it, <laughs> it, it, it is true that a lot of his ideology is within it. So, next slide. So, I, I was a teacher. I, I taught um, at the college level, and I like to break things down real simple. So, the plan itself is broken into four pillars. It's four pillars. So, it's a playbook that goes through four things. The first thing is to get rid of the Department of Justice. Now, I'm sure I don't have to explain to you why he would want to get rid of the Department of Justice. To be sure, we understand why he wants to get rid of the Department of Justice. But what does that mean for us? Well, that means that there would be no oversight of organizations on a state level or a federal level. So that would include eliminating the FBI, that would include eliminating the CIA. So eliminating the Department of Justice would mean that we would not need Supreme Court judges. So this is very serious. This is a very serious pillar. But that is one of the pillars. The second pillar, I should have printed out this page. Lord have mercy. Oh, extreme. Is it education? Is that what it says? Federal appointment? No, no, no. It's federal appointment. So now, actually, I'm really not that mad at him not being able to make federal appointments. I'll give you an example. During his presidential term, he actually appointed 23 federal judges. That was four times as much as President Obama did in two terms. That's serious. So when we say that this has been a plan, it has been a plan. When we hear them talking about, and I think education is number three, when we hear them talking about removing um, public funds to go to private or charter schools, right? Now, initially, black folks were excited because we were like, we can have our own charter school, right? I know y'all, I live right down the street. I know about, I know a little bit <laughs> about Farmville. So, so we were excited because we thought it would give us an opportunity to teach our way, to include our education. And what happened? They flipped the script real quick, didn't they? And they said, you know what? We don't need to talk about slavery. We don't need to talk about black folks. This ain't even on a federal level. The North Carolina DPI now has banned books that include the word slavery. So we're not talking about some obscure idea that happens in D.C. We're talking about what's happening right now. My son is in middle school. He's an eighth grader. And he came home about three weeks ago. And he said, Mama, can you believe they're really not teaching black history? 
He said, no, but but like for real, they're not teaching black history. And I said, I know. So this is this is this is us. These are our kids that they're that they're playing with, that they've been playing with. Right. And so so when you hear people say this is an extremism idea and they just they just trying to scare y'all to vote one way or the other. No, we're just exposing what's already been in the works for the last 30, 40 years. All right, where are we at? Yes, so we talked about, oh, but I can't leave education without talking about HBCUs, because I went to Morgan State University, so it was very important to me, all of the money that has been taken away from HBCUs. And what really got me was when he got on stage and said, I did more for black college, he was alive and the truth ain't in you. The truth ain't in you. So one of the things I want to make sure that we talk about in the plan if they want to eliminate the Department of Education, they want to use public funds to pay for private religious schools. Um, I believe it's page 126, and they say that um, if you are in public school, you would have to sign up for the Army, for the, for the, not just the Army, but the Armed Forces is the word that's used. But if you go to private school, you don't. The heck? <laughs> but that's what it says. The plan says on page 126 that if your child graduates from public school, they are in the draft automatically. But if they go to private schools, they don't have to. I mean, it's just bizarre. Eliminate no-fault divorce. That means that um, right now, if two parties disagree and they choose to go their separate ways, you can do so without a fee, well, a, a minimal fee. Well, they want to eliminate the option of doing that, which would mean it would be extremely costly for individuals to separate, no matter the reason. And one of the reasons they want to do that is because if they can increase the balance, you think about who's doing this plan. I didn't tell you that, did I? So, the Heritage Foundation is responsible for um, revising this plan in 2018. Now, what makes this different than how the plan was created in the past is that this is the first time in the history of plans that there have been a hundred organizations that all chimed in as to what they wanted to put in the plan. All 100 gave a lot of money to a particular campaign. There, that's one of the reasons it's so large. Everybody says, why is it 944 pages? Because it's the input of a hundred different organizations and businesses that were willing to put money in, in a certain candidate. It encourages drilling um, on ice caps. Now, y'all might think, like, what does that have to do with North Carolina? But, you know, drilling was a major issue in Dare County. Um, probably about five years ago. So this does include drilling in North Carolina, near Moorhead City, near Dare County. So it does apply to us. And one of the big things that I'd like to make sure that we understand is what seems obscure because it's on CNN or MSNBC is actually happening right here in our backyard. Every one of these issues come back to us one way or the other. They also want to ban books and curriculum regarding slavery. We talked about that. They want to dismantle the FBI. We know that. Um, they only recognize traditional families. Now, the reason this is important is because only those families would be entitled to tax breaks. Well, unfortunately, in our community, we sometimes have a higher number of non-traditional families, which means we will lose on that. And one of the other issues that is dear, near and dear to my heart is the money taken away from um, health care for women, for women's health rights. And when you look at it, the only thing that you will hear nationally is uh, about LGBTQ plus communities. But there's so much more there when you read it. I'll give you an example. This does not just apply to LGBTQ plus. It also says that it would completely eliminate STD testing. So that means that you could go to your doctor for any risk, for any reason, and not be able to get an STD test, even if you have insurance. 
Now, let me tell you why that's important for us in North Carolina, because North Carolina, unfortunately, is still in the top 10 for the rates of HIV with black women. We're still there. We're number nine in, in the country. So can you imagine how many would be at risk if they can't even get tested for it? How can they get treatment for it if they can't get tested for it? And the treatment, of course, has been eliminated as well. So it's really something for us to think about and to take wholeheartedly and um, not to um, fear. That's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do is make sure we understand why it's important for us to get involved and to really take this election seriously. And I know, I know if you guys have been around for a while, when you hear every election, right, this is the most important election of our lives. No, this one really is. Yeah, this one really is. Because one of the things that he would love to do, and it's in the plan, I'm not making this up, is to eliminate voting. Yeah. He wants a dictatorship. Yeah. He wants to be able to just keep it in the family, which is scary, even when I think about his own child. But I'm saying, you know, yeah, can you imagine, right? Um, so these are real issues to us. What do we have? Mass deportation. Okay, so everybody wants to talk about the immigrants, and they want to make it seem like it's one particular group, but it's not. I'm not sure if you all have been following the news now of what's going on with the Haitians. Um, and that's, that's right. So this does not just apply uh, to people that don't look like us, right? So it is important when they're talking about immigration, what this means to um, ship back everybody, because it's not just folks um, of Asian descent. And, and I think that what happened this week is proof positive of that. Um, when they, they, I said, man, they just went right for us, didn't they? They jumped, they jumped a whole lot of people and went right to the Haitians and said, we sending all y'all back next week. Um, so, I mean, so much so that they had to cancel school. So much so they were getting so many bomb threats that they couldn't even have picture day at an elementary school. That is ridiculous. So this is real. These things are real. Um, and, and so when I hear people say, oh, they just trying to um, get us to vote for Harris. I listen. I just want you to vote. I want you to have the right information, though, when you do. He wants to eliminate Social Security for the elderly and the disabled. Right? <laughs> he wants to eliminate Veterans Administration. Now, how is it that you want to draft with the kids from public school, but yet you want to eliminate the Veterans Administration? So it is very scary, and there's a lot of information there. And I don't know how much time I have. How much time do I have? <laughs> okay. So it repeals the cap on prescription drugs. And this is very important to our community because I don't have to look far. I, I think the last five years is the first time that we've had a cap on diabetic medication. Prior to then, the pharmaceutical companies could charge you whatever for your um, out-of-pocket cost. And so you would go to some states and your medicine per month would be $185. You go to another state and it could be $307. So I don't have to explain to you why they want no cap from pharmaceutical companies to be able to charge for medication. That has now, under the Biden and Harris administration, gone down to a cap of $35. No matter what your, no matter what your insurance is. So it has made a difference. And it's something for us to think about. And I don't know any of us that don't know somebody with diabetes, unfortunately. It also eliminates the access to birth control. So we talked about the STD um, testing, but it also limits the access to birth control. I'm going to leave that at that. <laughs> it ends the efforts to fight climate change. You know, um, yesterday, my, my daughter is a junior in high school, and she said, it got cold mighty quick. I said, it sure did. She said, I think the state fair, we might need sweatshirts this year. I said, we, we sure might. But yet, they're trying to say there's no global warming. And not only are they trying to say there's no global warming, but they don't want a plan 
to work on global warming, which creates a big issue, particularly for our black farmers. So um, what has happened under the Biden um, and Harris administration is there have been over $25 million specifically to black farmers in North Carolina over the last seven years. That's never happened before. And we need it. We need it. And without it, our black farmers won't have the support that they need to continue. And that means we have to rely on the grocery store and other countries to ship in what we eat. And we already know that never works so well for us. No. <laughs> never works so well for us. So one of the things that I want to talk about, I never like talking about specific issues without saying how we can help. Right? Like, what can we do about it? Well, the math states that if each of us is responsible for taking 10 people to the polls, that we can turn this election. Now, right now, Harris is up. She's up about 6% as of this morning. It changes. Yeah, she's up 6%, um, which is good, but there's a 2% differential, which means she's really only solid for about 4% of us. That ain't enough. It's not enough to get us to where we need to go. So one of the things that we do is we like to make it easy for us to be accountable for getting 10 people to the polls. Now, I can already tell you, if you're here tonight and you're interested in learning more about Project 2025, then you're probably the it person in your family or your circle. And what I mean by that is when it's time for election, what do they do? They text you and say, who who we, who we voting for? That's what my brother always says. Who we voting for? He don't ask me no questions. He just say, who we voting for? And then I just send him back a list and say, vote for this person. And he said, okay. And then he can text me and tell me when he's done. Right? Because some of us really take it more seriously. And some of us, frankly, just have more time to investigate um, in particular candidates um, and then be able to report back. So if you are that person, then rally is a tool to help you to be accountable for getting 10 people to the polls. Now, how do they do that? Voter registration records, that's all they use is voter registration records. So you sign up for Rally, then Rally will ask you to put your 10 people that you're going to be accountable for into the voter registration file that's going to come up right on your phone and say, Miss Sally says she was going to vote on, on the first day of early voting. Ding! Miss Sally voted. Now you can then call Miss I Don't call me and ask me Miss if Miss Sally voted because I don't know. Because that's not how the system is designed. It's designed for you to be accountable for your people. And, uh, and if Miss Sally doesn't vote on the first day, then it says, ding, one of your people didn't vote when they said they were going to vote. And now it's your responsibility to follow up with Miss Sally and say, Miss Sally, do you need a ride to the polls? Yeah. So it's, it's a way of helping us in our community who are really behind mobilizing them to be accountable for getting 10 people to the polls one way or the other. Now, one thing I am excited about is that this is the first time, I've been here 20, 24 years, it's the first election that I have seen so many people and organizations work together to get this done. So in the past, sometimes you would have this get out the vote effort uh, organization that got their little small <laughs> But they got a grant over here, so they're trying to be protective of the transportation to the polls. Then you got this organization over here, and they're just going to register the teams that the, you know that just turned 18. That's not happening now. Everybody is working together, and everybody is saying we we don't have a choice but to get on this train together, work together to have programs like this. We don't have a choice but to work together to get people to the polls. We don't care if it's the Deltas, the AKAs, the churches. I don't care. I just need you to get people to the polls. And preferably on the first day. Preferably on the first day. Um, for those of you who've worked the polls or have done early voting before, you know that they are systematically taking away our weekends that we're allowed to vote. So um, it's ridiculous. So they are systematically reducing the number of polling places. They are systematically requiring our voter ID, right? So this is the, all a part of the process to demobilize us as a community. Um, and I'm going to stop right there and ask if there are specific questions um, for me before we go on. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, uh, Tilden Weiss imported to uh, for early voting to vote on the first day. It is important to vote on the first day because A, it allows us time if there are any other issues to fix it. So that way, if you go to the polls and they try to say your license is expired, and it's a whole thing with the expired licenses, depending on what age you are, if you're 65 and older, it's like a thing. But if you go on the first day, then we can fix those issues. If you wait till November 5th, you'll have to do an absentee, but you know, it, it's a thing. So we really want you to go on the first day. Um, and the second reason is because if you're not registered, you can register. I want you guys also to remember, because I don't think I mentioned the lawsuit um, that was just <laughs> that was just wrapped up from um, the Republican Party here in the state of North Carolina, because um, they were sued for throwing out thousands of votes. So it is systematically trying to take people off of the rolls so that they can still win elections. It's just that simple. Um, and so this is real stuff. And it's happening like right here. Um, so that's why we want to figure out how we can do this and do this in the most right. One thing about us, one thing about us, if we know the rules, we can win the game. <laughs> it's when we don't know the rules and when they change the rules that we have a problem. But once we know the rules of the game, no matter what it is, we can win the game. And so getting people to the polls this year is us winning the game. Diane, if I can piggyback off something you said about the early voting and voting on the first day. When you vote uh, early voting, it takes a couple of days for your vote to register into the system. And if you register as a voter, you'll be registered as a Democrat, Republican, um, uh, Green Party, Independent, or whatever. So leading up to the election, they're going to be calling you because on that registration form, your phone number is on there. Your address is on there. You're going to be getting stuff in the mail. You're going to be getting phone calls. But when you early vote and you get in the system having voted, guess what? They ain't sending you nothing else. They're not calling you. They're not texting you. They're not sending you anything in the mail. And guess what they can do now? Now that I've early voted, they can take that effort and put it towards someone else. So it frees up their time to be able to reach out to people who have not voted. But she brought up a key point about um, if something goes wrong, you can walk in on early voting day, the first day of early vote, and register to vote right then and vote at the same time. But if there's a glitch in the system, something about it didn't go right, you got from October the 17th, until early or to November the 5th to fix it. So if you go vote early, you'll find out what's going on. I've been doing some voter registration here, and I can check and see if you are registered to vote. A lot of people tell me, yeah, I'm registered. Then I put their name in the system and search and find out they're inactive. You don't want to get to the poll on November the 5th, and they tell you that you're not in the system. You don't want to do that. Find out. If you even if you know you're a registered voter, find out. I registered someone today. And they said, Yeah, I'm a voter, I'm a registered voter. Name was not in the system nowhere. I said, Well, maybe you got the initial put the initial in, didn't show up. Well, guess what I did? I registered them on the spot electronically. I didn't even mess with the paper. I went right for this juggler. Register them right on the spot, but there are advantages to early voting, and then you don't have to stand in those lines on November 5th. And for those of us who live in Farmville, for the very first time ever, we have early voting at the community center. Early voting at the community center here in Farmville. So you don't have any excuse. I don't have to drive all the way to Greenville. I don't have to find this place in Greenville where I can vote. You can go right downtown Main Street at a community center and make your vote count. Okay. And the website to check that is ncsbe.org. N-C, like North Carolina, S-B-E. 
stateboardofelections.org. And if you don't want oh, to do it, and if you don't want to do it, see me after this, and I'll do it for you. I got my laptop set up out there on the table waiting for somebody to come, and I will confirm your status before you leave. Okay, see me after this. See me. Yes, ma'am. Because the system is not designed for us. So what they have done is, if your middle initial didn't have a period on your license, but it had a period somewhere else, they eliminated you. If you moved within the last six months, they eliminated you. If you were over 65 and had to be voted in the last couple of elections, they eliminated you. Yes, so it, it was systematic um, in how they removed people. So they removed people by the thousands, tens of thousands, intentionally. Um, and so it, it causes us to have to do more work and to have to work with our churches and everywhere else that we are. Uh, I just told her, I was talking to a church right before then, that's why I was really late. And I'm like, y'all need to be a pig wiggly. <laughs> like, I don't care where you go. Um, but we need to make sure that our people are registered to vote. It's best if everybody just check. That's what she said, and she's absolutely right. So, you know, people are like, well, could we educate them on what to look for? Just check. Just check. I mean, I vote in every election, and um, mine wasn't in there as my name. It had my initial, but it didn't have my full name, which is on my license for some reason. So just check, because they being real, real extra with that. Yeah. What if, I mean, you should be changing uh, your address when you move, but what if you did not get it changed before the election? That's one of my favorite. Old. That's one of my favorite questions. So I will tell you that legally. Your ID is to verify you, not your address. So legally, it's to it, it should not matter. However, to be safe, I would just make sure that I would check and register if there's ever a question. But legally, they are supposed to be using your photo ID to ID you and not your address. Oh, he's coming with us. I reported you in Fountain. You don't come to Palm and vote. Well, for early voting, it's my understanding. You could correct me if I'm wrong. You can. Yeah. Can. For early voting. On early November, voting only. Yeah. On, on November 5th, you have to vote at your polling place. Um, for and, and that's a great question she asked. Um, for early voting. You can vote at any site in your county, in Pitt County. And because Fountain is part of Pitt County, you can come to Farmville or any other voting site in the county. So to answer your question, yes. Which is another reason why we're telling people to early vote. Now I want y'all to understand, we are 47 days from the election. We are two and a half weeks from early voting. That's not a lot of time. It is not a lot of time. We are not talking about something that's going to happen months from now. We're talking about something that's going to happen days from now when we need to be ready. Mm -hmm. I would like to say, for everyone also, please be mindful when you go and vote. Because I experienced this in the last election, the primary. At the bottom of that form, they give you, when you vote, you have four courses. On your 18 years of age, on your felon, I can't remember the other two. But they want you to check each box before you vote. Not only that, I used to let I said, excuse me. I said, if you don't ask me, what about other people from me? Mm. Because I'm black. Mm. But you didn't ask anybody else those questions. Mm. Oh, by the way, uh, did your ID and your hair just met? I said, excuse me, but you have my ID, can't you see? I'm not supposed to ask no questions, not to you. Because you already have my address on the form and my ID, and it has not expired. So please be mindful that because they try to intimidate black people not to vote. They're only asking us not to white people. So be careful when you go in. 
And you can do a provisional ballot, but we want your vote to count right then. We can't leave it up to chance on them counting um, provisional ballots or mail-in ballots after the fact. So can you cast a provisional ballot? Yes, but we really need you to cast your ballot. Um, I was at a, uh, an event on Saturday, and there was a lady there that said that she checks her um, her voter search every night before she goes to bed. She said because she didn't want any kind of mess to be going on that she didn't she get to a polling place and she can't vote. She checks her every night. So anyway, I started doing that too. <laughs> I am registered, but I make sure because my my situation has is that I have an L on my name on the on the my name is Marsha um, because of my birth certificate. But anybody that know me call me Marsha without an L. So I want to make sure that that L is on my voter registration all the time. I don't want to take it off because that's what my birth certificate say. That's what my passport said. I want everything, and I carry my passport, my birth certificate. I got everything in my purse because if they ask for anything or you know something comes up, I got my I got my all my stuff with me. This is this is this is just how serious I am about this. I'm not saying you got to do what I do, but that's just me. Uh, but anyway, the voter uh, search, if you want to search, she said it again, said it one time, I'm going to say it again. It's V as in Victor, T, period, N-C-S-B as in boy, E, dot gov. And that's how you can do your search. I put it on my Facebook page. I, I put it on Instagram. I got it everywhere. So whatever you can do, get the word out, just check. And now, I didn't check with the pastor beforehand, so it's better to say excuse me, pardon me, than to ask for permission. But we do have rally forms here, but I like I like to incentivize folks because you know everybody likes a little something. So my real job, well, it's not an election. I'm a publisher. I publish black children's books. Well, the ban on children's books included a lot of black authors. In fact, 73% of the list of the banned books were from black authors um, of the books. And these were really good books. So I brought some of the banned books. One was Ruby Bridges. One, I mean, these are really good historic. Yeah, how are you going? How are you going to ban Ruby Bridges? Um, <laughs> but I have some of those books. And what I would like to do is to um, grant one of those books of your choice for three people that are able to join Rally and put at least 10 people in while you're here. If you can do that, then I will give you one. <laughs> Raise his hand. So the books are back there. You it's already know, Diane. <laughs> you already know. So I said, I ain't asking, them, but, you know, I'm just saying. That was what I would do. Well, I'm going to do that. Um, since I'm already working anyway, it's just going to be a natural occurrence for me to say that I'm going to commit to getting those 10 people and following up with them and make sure that they get to the polls, even if I have to take them myself. I do want to let you all know, too, that I have some sample ballots, and I want to thank... Um, Deacon Shoulders for printing some of these out. Uh, I don't have a lot of them, but those of you who would like to take a look at these sample ballots, these sample ballots have the candidates on there, and they have some highlighted that I think would, uh, their values would be similar to the values of your own, because that's who we should be voting for, isn't it? We should be voting for someone whose values whose ideas, whose principles line up with our own values and principles and ideas. And I have some sample ballots if you all would like to take a look at them. Uh, you can keep, I'm going to be printing some more. So um, I'm going to put my phone number out there. So after I get these ballots, you can, sample ballots, you can call me Saturday, Friday or Saturday. And you can get um, a copy of that if you don't get one tonight. But I do have just a few of those, and I will distribute those tonight for those of you who would like some. And if you don't get one tonight, please call me, 
8158, and I promise you I will get a sample ballot to you. Um, anyone else have a question? Anyone else have a question? Yes. I wanted to find out about the one in the one in ten. Um, how do we go about signing up for that? Um, putting it on our Facebook page. Um, what is it that you suggest that we do to promote that? Because it's an awesome idea, and I'm thinking about it. And do we? You were saying that we needed to put the people in now. Yep. What, do they know about it? Or do we have to know their address or no. all of their date of birth? No. Or? All you need okay. to know is their first and last name, and the county would help. If you put it in the county, that'll help to find. Because what it, yes. just so y'all know, it's just going by the voter rolls. And it's also another way of you checking to see if they're registered. Because if they don't come up, they're probably not on the, regi on the voter registration. So it's not tapping into anything but the voter file. That's what it is. Um, and you can text. Rally, R A L L Y, to 59868. Mm -hmm. Text the word rally, R A L L Y, to 59868. And then it'll take you right there. They're going to send you a text message, it'll ask you for your email, and it'll go right there. Excuse me. Yes. Um, why is it that they want to get rid of the ASO program? What did, what, what are they using as, as an excuse? And all the other things that they got that they want to eliminate or whatever, do they have any excuses why they use those? Absolutely. So their excuse or what they're saying is that they're cutting the budget. And if they cut the budget of things that cost, then they can cut overall taxes. So that, that's their excuse. Their excuse is that if we're able to cut all of the money that we pour into Head Start or all of the money. Do you know, first of all, I wasn't here to talk about the state race, but I'm going to do that too. Because this chick that's running for the uh, Department of Public Instruction, Moro, is ridiculous. How are you going to run for a job and put yourself out the job by eliminating the Department of Public Instruction? That don't make no kind of sense. It makes absolutely no sense. You burn yourself. You find her in yourself. If for no other reason, one would think that you would want the DPI to stay around. Absolutely. It makes no sense. Um, so, but their excuses and what you will hear and what um, what they're saying is this is a way of saving taxpayers money. But what it really is is giving a tax break to those that can afford a tax break, and it's actually costing us more. And not only is it costing us more by eliminating our tax breaks because they break it down. So I, I'm gonna tell y'all. So it used to be. When, when he took office um, the first time, he said, if you make over 250000 in a family of four, you would get the same tax break as the rich, people that make more. So I said, well, I'm going to make $250,000 then. You know what I'm saying? And if that's what I got to do for a tax break. Think about me and my family. Then, so I got right there. I was so close. I was so close that year. And then he changed it. That you had to make four hundred and fifty thousand in order to get the tax breaks, and so it's a, it's the same. So that's what. So it's not meant for us. It it is meant for an exclusive um, percent. It's less than six percent of the United States that make that as a household um, that would receive these tax breaks. But what they are saying is that I mean we put millions of dollars into Head Start. So if we cut that then we can catch up on all the money that we owe as a country. That's what he would say. Not thinking about our future because, of course, we need Head Start so that we can give our kids a Head Start, literally. Um, but, but that's what they will say, that it's saving money. Good question. Any other questions? I'm just talking um, right now, just talking to someone about some of the candidates. They have some questions about Ballot and I worked right, some of the people that did they did not know them. I was telling them, and, and my wife will attest to this that we've been to and you've been to everywhere I've gone, you have basically been there. And um, everyone up and down that ballot, um, where they are shaded, um, we've got some very 
good candidates representing us and wanting to represent us from the local level all the way up to the uh, president. And I would endorse any one of them. And I would um, put my name beside there. I would stand up for them. I would speak up for them because they have shown me and demonstrated to me that their values align with mine. Their thought process align with mine. Their ideology align with mine. They want to do the right things. They want to help the people. It's not about them. It's not about them. So I, I, I would I would really encourage everyone to take a look at these sample ballots. And like I said, my wife and I will tell you, Diane will tell you that we have met uh, probably over 90% of these candidates. And they have come out and they're out on a consistent basis sharing with you what they're all about and what they're trying to do to help you at every level. And I'm just pleased with the candidates that we have in this election. I'm just so happy. We really did a good job. I will say that piggybacking on that, um, one of the things that attests to that or supports that is that um, I don't know if you guys have heard of PACs. Those are um, PACs are political action committees. So sometimes um, we have black PACs. Right. We have black packs like in Charlotte, Mecklenburg. We have a black pack in um, Raleigh. So we have all these black packs throughout the state. They get together and they can be partisan and they can donate actual money and or endorsements to particular candidates. Well, this is the first time in the history of having packs that all the black packs got together and supported this slate of candidates. It's never happened before. Usually, they always do it independently. They say, uh-uh, this is serious. We have some really good, talented um, you know, candidates, and we're going to support them together. And they did that. And that's never happened before. OK, another question. This might not be something that you make an answer, but I'm just curious. Um, if you look all around North Carolina um, and the different local cities and towns. You see Trump, Donald Trump signs all over the place. Why is it that do you have any reason why a lot of the um, Kamala Harris signs are not all over? And you see more to Trump um, signs. Give us two weeks. So what happened was, remember, this ticket started out as Biden Harris. So the first batches of the signs were Biden Harris. So she had to wait legally until the convention for us to be able to print Harris Waltz signs. So the reason you're not seeing the signage is not because she doesn't have the support. It's because there was a delay in this ticket, which is a winning ticket. Um, but that's the reason that you don't see as many and that the ones you do see are smaller because what's happened is counties are purchasing them themselves instead of waiting for them to come. And so it's less expensive for them to buy the smaller signs than the larger ones. So don't, don't let, don't let the smooth taste fool you. Yeah, there is, there is a reason. Um, but within the next two weeks, you should see that catching up. But I will also say this, we have been conditioned to be scared. And so we have been conditioned to not be vocal about our support, depending on what room we're in or whom we live next to. And that is, is by design and not all of our fault, but it is real. Right, that there is that there is an intrinsic fear that has been put in us um, when we stand together, and some of us need to get over that. So there, but you know, in my neighborhood, I know I have a neighbor across the street from me who is a supporter, and a neighbor to the right of me who's a supporter, and I've lived in this house for eight years, and I've never seen a political sign. And they write checks, but they don't put a sign out. So, so there is that part of it that's a real, that's a real thing for us. Um, so don't let that fool you. And the third thing I'll say and the last thing I'll say is they fall in line. We have to fall in love. What I mean by that is they don't ask questions. 
This is how we voting. Boom. That's what we're doing. Does it matter? Does it make sense? Does it matter? They fall in line. We got to fall in love with a candidate. Well, I ain't like how she looked at me in the grocery store. I mean, am I lying? Am I lying? We, we, we got to meet them and, 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 and see if they're going to look at me and did they acknowledge who I was and she grew up down the street and didn't talk. I mean, we got to fall in love with candidates. They fall in line. And so this is the time where we need to get over that. That's my that's my. That's my to piggyback on what you said about the question that Pastor asked, uh, Pastor, there are a lot more supporters out there than what you would believe. And some of them are across the aisle. Yep. They don't want people to know. Nope. They do not want people to know that they do not support their candidate. So they're waiting until November 5th and they're going to make that vote count. But you were talking about we're conditioned to be scared. There's no fear on 4218 West Prince Road. Because you ride by my house and the signs are out there. It, Main Street, yeah. And, 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 and look, and the trash man crushed one of my signs last week. But guess what? I'm going to put another one out there. He don't know I got another one on the porch. He didn't mean to do it, but he did. So I'm going to go out there and put another one out there. It's as soon as I get out there and cut that grass. So, you know, if, if you want to meet some of these candidates, you want to talk to them, if you would please let me know. I will let you know when the next gathering of candidates are, are going to be. And you can go. Mother Luke has gone with us, and she's enjoyed it. And she's been one of my best volunteers out of this church. She and my wife and my daughter, and we appreciate her. We really appreciate her. And I do want to say that this coming Sunday, we have um, uh, appellate court judge Carolyn Thompson coming. She's going to come and make her appeal on why you should vote for her for North Carolina Court of Appeals. And I believe that after you meet her, you will fall in love. <laughs> I believe, I believe so. Family. And I'll say this. She's the highest ranking African-American female judge in the state. And if we lose that seat, we have no voice. So the North Carolina Court of Appeals is a court of 15 people. They sit in panels of three. She's the only African-American woman on the North Carolina Court of Appeals. The most important words we can say if we're in court and we feel like we have not gotten our due process is I appeal. That means it goes to that court and that court gets to decide if we have had an injustice. If we don't have representation on that court, we don't get our day. We don't get the, we don't always get a fair shake. So it's one of those things where it's not sexy, it's not the sexiest race, but it's a very important race. Very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on, hold on. Wanna make sure everybody hears the question they may have the same question. How in the world? <laughs> this man can run and all the stuff that he has been to the proper code. He, I'm worried. I mean, well, that and money. No. That and money. <laughs> you don't have the money. Money is paper. He just make it pay when he feel like it. Yeah, I mean, uh, to answer your question. It really is bizarre, but we are living in really crazy times, and it's extreme. So it's not even a difference of opinion. I feel like we've always had differences of opinion with these two political parties, but this is this is extremism. Um, you know, this is taking us back to Willie Lynch days. This is speaking of. Did y'all hear about that lynching? And I'm gonna, anyway, anyway, let me not get it. <laughs> so this is real stuff that's happening, you know, right here that, that I want us to be concerned with. And, and I don't want us to get lost in the, in the, it can be grand, right? So if you're watching the news and, you know, they're talking about some obscure town you never heard of in Arkansas, it might seem like it doesn't apply to you, but it does. And if you don't get anything else from this, we want you to know that it, it this is serious. 
and it has to do with our everyday life and our children's children's children. Is he not guilty? Oh, no, he was guilty. He was not only guilty of the charges, but remember, he was also indicted as president. So, I mean, yeah, he guilty. <laughs> According to his peers, said he was guilty. I just want to make a comment. Yeah, I'm going to make a comment. You know, we look at, again, the, the part of 2025. Like I said, it doesn't make any sense. But the bottom line is dictation. That's that's the bottom line, and Amen. that's what it's all about. Because it doesn't make sense. He just wants you to call the shots however he wants, and so so he can just devise everything else so that he will be in charge. And that's the bottom line. With and and so so I think my favorite line from the debate was when she said that what forty two million Americans fired you. Yes. 80, 81 million. 81 million. 81. Fired you. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's not surprising to me that he has said he didn't want another debate. He didn't want another debate. That's no. we, have, we have a question over here. Well, actually, I don't have a question. I just have a comment. Um, uh, thinking back on what the lady just said, uh, white privilege is real, so we don't need to get over there. We might as well get over there. So, um, that, 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 until we get the right people in place, then we will not be able to uh, um, deal with it. Um, the thing about the, you gave out the board relations site, but I'm just going to share this. They can do it like they want to, but all you got to do is go to the internet and just type in board search. Yep. And it'll take you straight there. You won't have to worry about going to the board. It's going to take you to the board relations site. And all you got to do is start putting your information. Um, I, I saw this meeting online. And um, when I got out of work this evening, I came home and I said, I'm going here. Because this is what I do. I've been doing it since the hour video and uh, way back before the flood, all the county meetings and meetings across the state uh, long before um, other people started doing them. And as a matter of fact, I video Monday, final film here at this church. Um, but uh, what I want to say is last night I heard about the meeting in Fountain. Now, I live in Hedgecombe County, but I'm all over the place. Uh, so I went to the meeting last night, not knowing who was doing the meeting. I felt like somebody that I could vote for would be there, but it was a whole room full of fountain folk. Uh, uh, well, not fountain, but uh, Pitt County. So all you got to do is go to my page. You'll see all the school board members. Everybody was there last night, room full of, at um, Amazing Grace Church. Okay. And so uh, you can go on my page and look at it and go to their page. Um, but um, I saw this meeting, so I wanted to come tonight, and so I can share it with folks. Um, uh, precinct chair in Hedgehog County, plus I'm on the North Carolina State Democratic Party, is their committee. Uh, so like I said, I've been doing this since the 80s. I don't look that old, but I'm um, 62 Christmas Day, but I've been doing this a long time. So and I just like to educate people. Thank y'all for allowing me to come. I'm glad you mentioned it. Do we have any other precinct chairs, any elected officials, um, anyone who's a candidate for a public office? We'd like to recognize you right now. Vice Chair for um, in Greenville. In Greenville. Windsorville. Windsorville. Anyone else? Well, I'm I'm the co-chair for Precinct B here in Farmville, um, at least until November the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I just want to say, uh, Judge Cole. Has Cole. anybody been able yeah, to successfully okay. add people to rally? Yeah. Well, Has okay. anybody been able to add people to rally? Let me get a lady's book. How many you have? Yeah. Even I'm not really a question, but I can comment. Mm -hmm. I just want to um, commend Pastor Ed for opening up his door for this event. Um, I know a lot of times you don't know, bring up politics in the church per se, but um, it, it's, it's just awesome that, you know, I just wish more churches would, you know, get involved with because that's where the bulk of us are on Sunday morning. You got the most audience, you know, you can just really, you know, I know that a lot of things politics. 
that, but you know, I just really commend him from opening his doors to all. Uh, you are absolutely right. And um, but what I am seeing, and I can say, I am encouraged. I am encouraged because um, I know the A and E Zion Church in North Carolina just said last week that they were dismantling their protocol in regards to having elected officials and votes on the ballot in the pulpit, and they have not done that in over 20 years. Um, and so I think we're getting there. But remember, we said we have 48 days. We ain't got a lot down, so we're a little behind the frame. But I do commend you for doing that because um, it is important. And what I say is, is, is near and dear to my heart because we've all, the church has always been our place. Yeah. It's always been that place. It's, it's a meeting place. It's our voting place. It's our praying place. It's our. It's supposed to be the place. So it's just refreshing to see that wave coming. No matter how late, I'll take it. I'll take it. Wonderful. Um, it's, it's great that we've had how many different churches represented here tonight? At least five. I know we have St. James. We have Moore's Chapel. We have um, Salvation and Praise. Uh, we have um, Victory um, Christian Assembly. Uh, who else do we have here represented tonight? My church is in Pitt County, Anderson Chapel. Anderson Chapel. Um, where is that? They were they were uh, St. James. They were St. James. But not only are the members here, but Pastor Dupree came out to see what information his members are getting. So I commend him for doing that. He could have stayed home. He could have stayed home. But when you care about your people and you care about your sheep, you want to see what they're being fed. And make sure that they're not fed anything contrary to what he's feeding them himself. So I commend him for doing that. Let's give him a hand. Um, let's give uh, Diane and Josephine a hand. I really appreciate these two ladies. I really do. I appreciate it. When I put the idea out to um, Diane and Josephine, they jump right on I said, oh man, I gotta find a date. I gotta find a date. I gotta get my pastor to approve it. I gotta do this. I gotta get all this done. But they, it all came together quickly. As soon as I gave her a date, I got her approval. I turned her back. You know what she said? We'll be there. I was like, yes, yes. So we, you know, they just, she just went ahead, got a flyer done, got all that stuff done. I didn't have to worry about any of that. All I had to do was just put it out there. Put it out there. Post it. Put it out there. And I thank God for them coming. I thank God for the spirit of wanting to educate people, wanting to inform people. Uh, the more you know, the better you are. And we're not going to just vote on November 5th. We're going to be informed voters. We're going to have, we're going to be educated voters because we're going to know what the issues are. And we, we have taken that time, and I really appreciate them. I'm at your beckoning call, Diane. You, if you need the mic back, you can get it. But if you need me, you can call me. I'll come and help you in any way that I can. Thank God for you. Let's give her another hand. Yeah. Pastor, do you have anything that you'd like to say? Yeah. Lady Brenda? Yeah, Pastor Dupree? Yeah. Anyone have any question or comment? I will be at the table in the lobby checking on your voting status. So if anyone would like to see me, and for those of you who are want uh, a sample ballot, uh, my number is 252-717-8158. I will have a sample ballot, more of them, this weekend. Salvation and Praise, when you come here Sunday, I'll have some for you. God bless. Excuse me. Diane? You're wanted.